you're watching Wild Enough to Shoot At. Crazy like a fox, howling like an alicat, sneaking up slow, marching like a diamond back. You'll never see her coming till she hits you like a heart attack. She's wild enough to shoot at. Hi, my name's Paul Cook, owner of Hillbilly Taxidermy. I come all the way from North Carolina to pick my deer up. I don't trust nobody but Paul. He does the best work anybody has seen. whitetail nose you've got nodules and what that is that's a raised it's like a little plump plumpness and you've got little things called rosettes well as a deer shrinks and dries you lose that plumpness on the nose so you have to recreate the nose recreate these little nodules these little bumps I use a Mod Podge to recreate that and it gives the, the nose a wet look so we try on recreating the plumpness on the nose where it's got the slick look. Uh, most commercial type mounts don't have the uh, nodules recreated. It's a slick nose and it's painted jet black. Um, a deer's nose is not black. It is uh, a type of gray, a little bit of brown, um, it's a little combination of both. But as a deer fades down to the bottom, you start seeing more flesh pinky color. So we try to recreate all that because once a mount shrinks and it dries, you lose that color. So you got to recreate what was taken away. We do the same around the eyes. Um, again, back up to the eyes, we have uh, these little, I don't know if you can see them, but there's little small oil gland bumps that's recreated with Mod Podge. We try to bring those back on there. Um, the eyelash on a whitetail is always at a 45 degree angle. So I know lots of times you'll see eyelashes that go straight up uh, like a lady's eyelash, that's not correct. That's not anatomically correct. Hair pattern is a big thing. The hair pattern on the nostrils, you got to make sure everything's tucked up inside. The hair pattern on the forehead, the brow area, uh, hair pattern around the uh, antler burr. So there's a lot of hair patterns that you got to really watch out on a whitetail. Another key important thing is uh, your brisket area. Making sure your brisket's lined up correctly. Uh, a lot of grooming. Hair pattern flows to the middle, uh, making sure all your hair pattern is correct up in your armpits. You got to make sure that's correct. Uh, I've seen a lot of briskets that's actually uh, brushed wrong, a bushy brisket. Uh, this being an early cape, uh, October cape, the brisket itself is uh, it's not as thick as you would see in a November or December cape. But making sure your brisket is is perfectly straight that that makes a big difference in your mount. Um, another thing is um, your leg action, making sure your legs are correctly, your hair pattern is correct on a leg. Uh, that's to do with reference photos. You got to get reference photos when you mount a deer. Um, we got a lot of reference photos here we use to recreate the animal. Get your reference photos, make sure your hair patterns are correct. Um, the thorax muscle, we try to bring that back out. Um, your brisket, make sure your um, um, what I call a bib. Um, another thing is your throat patch, making sure your hair pattern is correct. This, this deer has an unusual double bib or a double throat patch, uh, recreating this uh, Adam's apple a little bit. That's actually in the mannequin, 
But you got to make sure your 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 throat patch is is uh, well proportioned. I've seen some of them sideways. I've seen some of them on that's not lined up straight. So, uh, but once you get the hair pattern flowing and everything's lined up, it makes a, a beautiful mount. One thing I hate to see on a whitetail mount is what we call deer in the headlight look. Uh, that's those bulging eyes that you see on these whitetail deers, uh, which is not anatomically correct. Uh, the deer in the headlight look, it's got those big round bulging protruding eyes. That's not, that's not what a deer's eye looks like. A deer's eye, is, it's set into the uh, head. So that's why it's very important to specify and to bring out the top and the bottom lobe on the uh, on the actual eye itself, uh, because there is a fleshy part here. There's a fleshy there's a fleshy part here, and there's a thick, meaty, fleshy part above that. We flesh that out of the whitetail. We take it out of the skin, off the hide, and then when you go to mount it, you got to reproduce that. You got to recreate that with clay to give it that heaviness look. So that's that's the key. Uh, your clay work is the key underneath the skin, getting your clay work right before you actually mount the deer. So. On a white-tailed deer eye, it has a, a top lobe which you got to really bring out and it's got a what I call a, a, a crease above the top orbital part and a lot of people leave that out. They leave this little crease out. Um, the tear ducts are very important. I've seen a lot of tear ducts that's more or less opened up really wide, but a, a, a whitetail's deer, it's, uh, its tear duct is actually closed over. But um, that's the main important thing on, on a whitetail is their eyes, trying to bring it back to life. Uh, a lot of deer that you see has got the dead look still to it. Thank mm -hmm. you.